So we had some informal introduction of constructors. And we just said that constructor is a member of a class which is designed to initialize the state of an object at the time of its creation. If you find a way to create a new object uh, from a particular class, it's guaranteed that its constructor is called. So we don't specifically call constructors. They're invoked any time you manage to create a new object. I'll give you an example. If we defined our, our stack class, and it has a default constructor, then when you create an array of, say, 100 stacks, each single instance of an object populated inside an array of 100 stacks, uh, stack objects will be, the, the, the constructor of every single one of them will be invoked, and you get, simply by creating an, an array of 100 objects, uh, 100 times the constructor is invoked for every single one of them. An example. So uh, constructors are extremely important and they play a very important role. So today's presentation, official presentation as we started, uh, is going to discuss this object life cycle. Object life cycle is going to be in our view simply because we want to observe creation of objects uh, and then their uh, their ending, their essentially their destruction, uh, uh, the fact that they they, they go away, uh, and we we would like to find a way to control both creation and destruction of our objects. An example of that would be if our stack um, stack of integers becomes uh, starts um, uh, managing its memory dynamically. Then, when it goes away, when it goes out of scope, perhaps we want to be able to tell the object that we want to delete memory allocated. If user no longer wants to use, to, to, to use our object, which is right here, right? If this object disappears and basically gets removed from the scope, no longer accessible, no longer exists, uh, no one actually, maybe, no one called delete on this chunk. And it's our responsibility to tell the object, when you're going out of scope, go ahead and delete this memory. And that would be the role of the destructor. So that's why we say object life cycle, the creation and its, uh, its destruction. Both are equally very important events. So, um, so I think we started on this a little bit uh, before. Uh, we want to say we want to control object creation using constructors. We want to understand what default constructors are, other types of constructors, and uh, many other things that constructors bring with them. And then eventually, we're going to cover destructors, and we're also going to uh, talk about references and object copying. So uh, here I go back to the, uh, the, uh, the topic of pointers. So a uh, point could be, uh, I'm sorry, not pointers, but, but point objects. Points on, the, on like a 2D plane and uh, having uh, coordinates. And so the syntax of the constructor is going to be that we declare an object and we use parentheses to pass parameters which will be used by the constructor to initially uh, configure the object since the time of its creation. Uh, when we say new in our programs, we are calling constructors if we, we, if we use new to instantiate our objects. I will cover some examples. The primary role of constructors is to guarantee that the object starts its life in a good state, in a known state, in some state that is manageable because it has a, a lot of data members, uh, we want to be able to control the state of these data members from the very beginning. With an example of the stack, the role of constructor is primarily, or, or its initial role, was to initialize the stack pointer to zero 
Otherwise, if it's garbage value, we're really in a really bad shape. We're not doing well. We, the, the object is unusable. The stack pointer has to be set to zero to begin with. So uh, that's why we're moving on to this discussion about the constructor. Uh, if we do not provide a constructor, a default constructor is provided for us automatically. And also a uh, default destructor is also provided automatically. And a default copy constructor is provided uh, for, uh, to us automatically. As well as the uh, default implementation of an assignment operator. All of this is actually a set of topics which are very related. And so uh, we have to um, carefully go through all of this. And, and discuss why is it important, how they relate it, and what is best practice on our side to, you know, to take advantage of all of this. So um, here's a little graphic uh, that would um, uh, that demonstrates um, an um, an extremely valuable uh, property of C plus plus. Or its, or, its, or its feature, if you will. And um, plainly, th this is what it is. What happens is that if we have some classes, and I use like a little, uh, little um, moped with an engine and transmission and a wheel, and a wheel happens to be an array of two wheels right there, right? So it's like a little, little uh, uh, scooter uh, type of device, right? So if separately class cylinder is defined and class transmission is defined and the wheel is defined somewhere else and the engine is also defined and the engine happens to have uh, like uh, an array of two cylinders, uh, we begin to observe by this sort of like composition of objects that MOPAD really is a, an aggregation of other objects, right? So this class has uh, uh, you know has an object name engine but it is uh, a user defined class in its own turn this class has a cylinder and it has an array of two cylinders so if someone says moped and creates it right just instantiates an object very simple simple in the main function like this what happens is that this will be our timeline going down this way. And this is the set of objects involved. The first things that thing that happen is that, um, uh, by the way, MOPAD constructor itself isn't shown or, you know, it, it's not defined in any of these classes. But remember, default constructors still do exist. So when the MOPAD constructor uh, is invoked uh, from main because we simply want to instantiate an object. What happens is that the chain of constructors is also taking place, a chain of calls to other constructors. So first of all, take a look at this. A MOPAD is defined as first having an engine. That is guaranteed that the engine constructor will be invoked right at this point, right at the beginning. The engine in s itself says that I have two cylinders. So it has a composition of two cylinders in the form of this array of two cylinders. And those themselves are also classes. So guess what? The cylinder class constructor is invoked twice. And then the engine constructor finishes. And we go back to the moped constructor. Then there is a transmission. And the transmission is just one single object, and it's defined here, so everything's OK. So the transmission constructor is invoked next. It finishes. Then we construct an array of two wheels. And guess what? Twice the constructor of the wheel class is also called. What it tells us is that the sequence of constructors and the logic of constructors is very predictable. If you constructed a class, which is a composition of other class objects, 
it is completely predictable how these object constructors will be invoked and in what sequence. So, by the way, this makes it very important as a decision on our part how to sequence data elements inside of our classes. Because if you put engine down here, you know, below the wheel construction, its constructor will be invoked down here after transmission and wheels are constructed. But because we said, no, 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 we want this to be the top level member of our class, its constructor is executed first. Now remember, when I say constructor, it's just another function. It's just like packaged and, and, uh, and, and made up uh, slightly different using, using different syntax. But this dynamic is extremely important. It's very, very predictable. I'll give you, you might say, well, so what? Uh, okay, well, this seems like, you know, one line of, of thinking could be, if I code everything properly, right? And I even try to design my classes so that they really don't depend on each other uh, heavily. For example, why should cylinder depend on a wheel, right? That just doesn't make sense. Those are very standard individual objects. Why should I even care? All I know that each object will be constructed, its constructor will be invoked, I can be sure of that. Why is it important for me to know that uh, construction took place and uh, in that particular sequence? In many cases, this is fine. You don't have to worry about it. But sometimes, I'll uh, give you this demonstration. For example, um, let me just erase this and uh, start with like little blank. Uh, actually, let's save this. 